In today's video, I will show you the best way to dual boot Fedora Workstation with Windows 11 or Windows 10. But this method makes it very easy to install Fedora alongside Windows 11 on the same drive. But this is the safest way to set up a dual boot on any computer without risking data loss. However, I strongly recommend to back up any important files to the cloud or external media. Also, at the end of this video, I will show you how to safely remove Fedora from the do boot. But be sure to watch the video until the end to avoid any confusion. Now check the description below for valuable information, timestamps, and download links. The only prerequisites of this video, you need Windows 11 or Windows 10 installed on your PC or laptop and 8 gigs or higher USB pen drive to create a bootable disk with Fedora, and lastly, 50 GB of free space reserved from your existing drive. If you're using Windows 11 Professional, disable BitLocker encryption before proceeding. BitLocker can interfere with Linux installations, since Linux doesn't support BitLocker encrypted drives. For Windows 11 Home users, this feature is permanently disabled, so you can skip this step. Before installing Fedora, it's recommended to create a system restore point on your Windows computer. Now go ahead and search for restore point in the start menu and open it. This tool allows to take a snapshot of the current system state. If something goes wrong with Fedora installation, you can use this backup later to restore your system to normal. Then open Windows Terminal. Type diskmgmt to access the Disk Manager, which displays all connected drives and their partitions. In my case, you can see that one drive is connected. The drive 0 has three partitions. The first one is the EFI partition where the Windows bootloader is present. The second one is the main Windows. And the last one is the recovery partition. I'm going to choose the C drive to shrink the free space for Fedora. In your case, it might be D, E, or F, whatever. Just choose any partition and right click on it. Choose shrink volume and allocate a minimum of 40 GB or more for Fedora. You can type the value in megabytes. In my case, I'm going to allocate 150,000 megabytes. Then click on shrink. This will create unallocated free space. And that's it. We have done creating a free space for Fedora. Now with that said, it's time to get started with the Fedora installation process. First, head over to Fedora website and download the Fedora Media Writer and install it. Then connect your USB stick to your computer. Now open Fedora Writer. Take the option to download the ISO automatically and click Next. Select Official Editions and choose Workstation. Then select the latest version and set the hardware to Intel or AMD 64-bit. Finally, select your USB device and click on Download and Write. Now, this will take some time depending on your internet connection and the writing speed of your USB drive. Once it's done, it's time to boot the system into BIOS. You can turn off the PC and boot into BIOS settings using the keyboard shortcut based on your motherboard. Now mostly it could be F2, F9 or the escape key. If you don't know how to boot into BIOS, I'm going to show you how to do it from Windows. 
just click on the Windows Start menu, hold the Shift key and click on Restart. Then your computer will enter into Windows Options menu. Now click on Troubleshooting and Advanced Options and select UEFI Firmware Settings. Then click on Restart to boot into BIOS. In my case, my computer has booted into the startup menu and I'm gonna press F10 to access the BIOS setup. In the UEFI BIOS, enable USB boot and change the boot order by setting the USB drive as primary. Then disable secure boot, which is very important. Now once it's done, save the changes. Now your system will boot into Fedora from the USB device. If it fails to boot, use the boot menu to load Fedora install media. Now when you're inside the Fedora live setup, Go ahead and connect to the internet. Once it's done, click on Install Fedora. This is the brand new Anaconda installer. Now go ahead and set the system and keyboard language. Then select your drive from the top. We are going to use shared disk with the other operating system. But this option keeps the current disk layout and uses the free space we created earlier, the dual boot with Fedora. Then click next. You can secure your data using disk-based encryption. But for now, I leave it unchecked. The installer will create the required partitions for Fedora using the free space. You can see them listed here. Now click on install to begin installation. Sit back and relax. The process will take some time depending on the speed of your drive. Once it's done, go ahead and shut down your computer. And remove the bootable media. Then turn on your PC and choose Fedora from the grub menu to boot into the newly installed operating system. Now go ahead and set up your language, time zone. Enable third party repositories, create user account and start using Fedora. Congratulations, you have successfully set up a dual boot with Fedora and Windows 11. The first thing you should do after installing Fedora is update the system. Open terminal and type this command.
Also, don't forget to watch my video where I show 11 things to be done after installing Fedora. Now check the link in the description down below. So as a bonus part of the video, if in case you don't like Fedora and decided to uninstall, then reboot your computer and boot into Windows 11 operating system. Once you are inside Windows, open the search bar and type Disk Management. Then select this option from the results. Here, in my case, next to the C drive, two new partitions are showing. We need to delete each partition one after the other. Right click on each Fedora related partition and choose delete volume. This will free up the space on your drive. You can then right click on your C drive to extend the partition. Now let's remove the actual grub bootloader that Fedora installed on your system's EFI partition. Open command prompt as administrator. Inside the command prompt, type disk part. Then type list disk. Now this will show all the drives connected to my PC. Now as you can see, drive 0 is the only drive connected to my computer where windows are present. I'm going to go ahead and select this drive by typing select disk 0. Now I'm going to type list partition to view all partitions of this drive. Then type this command to assign a drive letter. After that, Type the assigned letter followed by a colon and press enter. Now type dir to view the contents of the partition. You should see the EFI system and mock kernel. Now type these commands to delete system and mock kernel. Then navigate into EFI by typing this command. Type dir to view its contents. Now this is where both Windows and Fedora boot files are stored. Now type this command to delete the Fedora. And that's it, we have successfully removed Fedora. Now restart your computer. It should boot your system into Windows 11 directly and you won't face any issues. This is how you properly set up a dual boot on your Windows 11 computer with Fedora operating system. And that's pretty much it. What do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comments section down below. Thank you so much for watching. This has been KSK Ryo. I will see you in the next one.